everyone. Welcome to Nurse Deck Podcast. I am your host today, Jamie Smith, and today we are excited we are interviewing Debbie. Hi there, Debbie. Hi, Jimmy. Debbie, can you tell us, how did you get started in nursing? Okay, my career in nursing started about, um, let's say, 15 years ago, uh, but um, as a child, I'd always wanted to become a nurse, and um, anytime my uh, dad is around, I always tell him that I wanted to become um, a nurse, and it all started like a dream, a passion. I just, um, um, it started with the uniform, yes. I loved <laughs> um, seeing uh, nurses from the white uniform, and um, I would always tell my dad that I really liked um, a nursing as a career. But, well, at that time, I... I've not really gotten to understand what the profession um, is all about, but it was just something that um, was already laid in my heart as a child. And um, uh, I think um, um, while growing up also, my dad also got um, a first aid box in our home and I started <laughs> cleaning wounds. I started taking care of people at home, even, if, even though I, I didn't even understand what I was doing. And, um, um, little things that should scare um, all that children, something like man, blood or things like that. I um, I saw myself going for those things. So at that point, I knew that I was called out to do um, something like this. So while growing up, it never changed. It got stuck in my memory that um, this is something that I can do. So um, uh, after high school, um, it got to a point that I had to choose a career even while i was in high school i would always tell my um, school principal that i'd always i, I want to become a nurse and at a point i think my principal called me and he said mm, maybe i think you are too intelligent for this why not go for medicine or something else like and i was like no i'm not going to do that this is what i want to do so uh there was this back and forth and um here we are today even um after i finished um, from um, secondary school, I got my dad also um, um, asked some um, nurses that were already working at that time. He knew about the number of them, and he um, they gave him um, certain information that he needed. And I um, got into school, nursing school. Yes, and since then it's been a smooth ride all the way. Yes. That's... <laughs> so, Debbie, tell us what drew you to maternal and child health nursing. Okay, um, another that's um, for maternal and child aid. I started um, um, developing interest for maternal and child aid um, during nursing school when I worked in the labor world. Uh, it was so interesting, <laughs> you know, um, seeing women going through so much pain to birth their babies and uh, the joy on the faces and that of their family members after um, the arrival of their babies was something I wanted to be a part of. Um, so, but um, something also uh, at the corner of my mind, I was considering doing um, some other um, specialty because um, the way midwives are uh, being treated in my country was not something I, I, I thought I was called out for. Let me put it that way. Um, um, the remuneration, the incentives, and things like that. So I was like, these people are doing so much. So why are they not recognized? Um, why are they not so recognized like um, other specialties in nursing? So um, at, the, at some point, I started um, losing interest in midwifery. Um, but it happened that um, I think a few months my wedding, my husband to be at that time um, is a medical professional. So, and he said, Debbie, why not midwifery? And I was like, I'm not interested in this thing anymore. I don't know. So I started um, um, exploring other options. I, I think I went for an examination to get into uh, pediatric nursing, and I didn't get it. I also went for um, theater nursing. I didn't get it. So, well, Obi got me the, the form, that's the application form for the midwifery, and I wasn't even interested in preparing for the examination. I was just like, let me just go and do this thing. So let it not look as if <laughs> you just wasted your money or something like that. So I just dragged myself to the examination venue, and um, surprisingly, I wrote the exam and I got in. 
So <laughs> I was so happy. I was so happy when I got in and um, it was like, oh, this thing you're running away from, this is your first love. So it's it's very important that you come back to it. And uh, when I started the midwifery, I did it, discovered that or oh, the interest or the love for midwifery never left in the first place, even though um, there were a lot of things that were wanted to cloud my sense of judgment, that um, a lot of things that wanted to make me feel like um, I, I, I should do something, something else. So, but... Um, after I started the midwifery program, I started to fall in love with midwifery um, once again. So that was how I got myself into midwifery. Thank you. Thank you for that information. So to make sure we understand right, you said that you walked into the, the, the labor and delivery floor while you were in nursing school. You saw the joy yes. on the faces, was seeing the babies, and you wanted to be a part of it. And ultimately, you lost interest in being a midwife because of how they were treated in your country. Is that right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, yes. Now, what country are you from? I don't think you've mentioned that to our viewers. Okay, I'm from Nigeria. Thank you. There you go, from Nigeria. Yes. And so you lost interest, but then you ended up getting back into it, and now you love it. Is that right? Yes, thank you. That's it, yes. So can you tell us more about the budding nurse, TBN, and Pregnancy Support Partners International, its mission and vision? Okay. Um, the budding nurse is a social community for nursing students, and um, um, it's uh, a community for nursing students, like I said. And we have um, different um, um, nursing students in my community, those in year one, year two, year three nursing students, those in their final year in the university or school of nursing, as the case may be. Um, so the um, primary purpose or the, the mission um, for the body nurse community is to create a community of, for nursing students um, in order to enable or to help nursing students maximize their potentials to the fullest. And um, our vision is to ensure that um, Balanced nurses, skillful nurses, innovative nurses, um, in, um, yeah, innovative nurses are groomed in the body nurse community. Um, for the Pregnancy Support Foundation, um, recently the Pregnancy Support Foundation recently got uh, registered with the CAC in Nigeria, and the um, Pregnancy Support Foundation is a community for. Uh, pregnant women, the community that ensures that pregnant women get the adequate information they need during pregnancy, uh, during delivery, and after um, delivery. Uh, because um, we also found that a lot of women don't get adequate information while they are pregnant. And, uh, and they, we did also discovered that some uh, people who are not health professionals, but maybe because they've had one child, um, two children, they feel oh, they have the necessary information or adequate knowledge uh, when it comes to childbirth and um, pregnancy. So we came up, um, I and um, it's, um, well, the body nurse community is my community, but the Pregnancy Support Foundation is an initiative that was created by a, a friend of mine, Adiswa Oni. So she called me on board to partner with her um, in, uh, um, in this initiative, that's the Pregnancy Support Foundation. But the body nurse community is a community that I founded, is a community that I'm very, very passionate um, about. It's a community that I, I have a lot of plans for, I have a lot of visions for. And, you know, generally, I want to make sure that the, the, the future generation of nurses are ready to take up challenges, their feet, um, and, um, after graduation, you know. At some point, I discovered that uh, many, um, so many nursing students, when they get into um, nursing school, they have a lot of aspirations, they have a lot of dreams, but when they get into school, uh, because of the um, academic challenges, because of um, the uh, clinical postings and things like that, um, so they get so buried in all of these activities that they even forget to develop themselves. And on graduation, they begin to realize that they have not done so much for themselves or they've not acquired all the necessary skills that they need to, uh, they, that they should have you know, acquired even while 
um, they were in training. So what I do in the body nurse community so is to um, help the student nurses understand that, you know, even while you are trying to get the necessary bedside skills, you want to know how to um, carry out these procedures. It's also very important that you develop yourself. You gain necessary skills that you need to, you know, to sustain yourself when you get out um, of school. So that's what I do at the body nurse community. Thank you. So just to make sure we understand right, the TBN or the budding nurse, it's a support system, it's a community for students. It helps to support them, yes. it gives them education and the knowledge they need to be successful. Is that correct? Exactly. Yes, you're correct. Okay. And the pregnancy support partners, that's for women so that they have the information they need to go through their pregnancy. Is that what you said? Exactly. That's what I said. Yes. Okay. Debbie, what do you think is your ultimate driver in creating the social group like the budding nurse? Is it because you know that there's such a need for it or what? Well, um, like I said earlier, it um, started as a passion. I, um, well, while uh, after nursing school, I, I discovered that I had a thing for nursing students. Even as a nursing student, I would, in my final year, I would want to teach um, the junior nurses that those in year one or year two. So after even when I started working, although the first unit when I got into the um, the government setting, the first unit I I worked, uh, we don't get to see a lot of nursing students all the time in my unit. It was an outpatient department. So, but um, whenever they are special postings and they are, um, they they send student nurses over to the clinic. You know, the, I discovered that uh, the interest is was still there. I would I would want to teach them because um, the the clinic was not so uh, busy, it's not as busy like uh, as the wards. Yes. So um, whenever we are we're free, we are um, I, I'm finished attending to um, the patient. Let's say uh, when we are done with the rush hours, I will always um, tell them, okay, let's bring out your notes. Let's do something. Let's um, have um, a discussion you get so it started like that and um, from time to time I was always interested in uh, what they were doing outside nursing what uh, what was their passion what you know what they wanted to do um, after leaving school so that was how it started so and by the time I was now moved to um, um, the adult unit that's the medical ward where I get to see a lot of student nurses from time to time and um, it was um, something that I had always looked out um, for. So when they come, they at least in in, in a month or at least we had student nurses who were frequenting the ward. You know, unlike when I was in the clinic or when I was working in the emergency. So this the only at that time it was just based on I think special postings or something like that. But in the ward they were very frequent, and you know, whenever I see them, I just have this passion of, of speaking with them. I'm talking with them. I want to know what they are up to. What are you doing? Are you having any academic challenges? Are you having any issues? So that was how it started. So, and then I looked at it. I, it's possible I could reach out to more students. Why um, should I just um, pitch my things or narrow myself down to um, just a few students I come across in the clinical setting? So I called, um, I had a conversation with my husband. I also had a conversation with my brother. And um, my brother is someone who, who was very used to, who is very used to um, um, communities, um, starting up um, outreaches and things like that. So he said, okay, you can come up with a community where you would um, um, be able to have all the student nurses in one um, platform and not necessarily those um, from your, um, 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 let's say, that's th those who are trained um, in the hospital where you're working, you could have other student nurses from other schools join um, the community. And <laughs> it started like a joke. I just sent the link to a few nurses that um, um, that I know, a few student nurses that I know. And that was how um, people started joining the, the community. And, you know, it started from there. And, you know, today, I don't know, that's, that's how the whole... Um, the body nurse community started and I'm so happy about it because um, this community has offered um, support to a lot of students 
you can come in there and you you tell us what you're worried about um you can come into the community and say okay this is what i experienced in the clinical setting this is my challenges and you see people who would come um, and and send you an emoji a hug emoji or you know just tell you something that would make you relax something that would make you feel that you are in a community where there is love you understand i get to see people discuss um, certain things with me that they would not necessarily be able to maybe walk to their lecturer or their tutor or maybe somebody in their school environment you get so it's been fulfilling since i started the body nurse um, community so it's it was a passion that started even while i was a student and um I started working in the, in the in the clinical setting, so I just felt okay. I could reach out to more people, so that was how I started the community. It's obvious you're passionate and you want to be there for these students, and that you're making a difference. Yeah. I'm sure you've definitely made a difference for them. Yes. So, tell us, Debbie, what motivates you in becoming a nurse coach, a mentor in health education for pregnant women? Okay, like I said earlier, I discovered that um, women uh, in my country, some women, um, do not get adequate information from the right source. So we have a lot of people who want to have a say when it comes to health, when it comes to health issues. People who are not even in the medical field, they want to have a say um, because they've had a child or something like that. So even, you know, we have it, it, it just happened that way. And, and I was like, um, when I think this one called me, I was like, okay, I'm starting this community for pregnant women. What do you think? And I was like, wow, this is a beautiful initiative. I want to be a part um, of this. So we started by educating pregnant women online. I think we started on WhatsApp, and um, I think two times a week we would, give, uh, we would educate these women um, based on certain topics um, surrounding pregnancy, surrounding um, labor, surrounding um, delivery. So, and... Uh, I also started creating um, content that has to do with the pregnancy-related issues, delivery-related issues. Yes, so I've, I've written a number of articles that um, I've posted on the Facebook community of the Pregnancy um, and Support Foundation. So um, the passion started from me, you know, seeing that women were not getting the adequate information they need. And I said, okay, Debbie, you are a health professional, you are a nurse, you are a midwife. So anybody um, getting information from you is uh, whatever information anybody's getting from you, it's very certain that you are getting the right information. So since you know what is right and you have the adequate information, you have the right information to give to these people. Why sit in your corner? Why fold your hands and you watch these people get the wrong information from people. So, and you know, these days, um, technology is making a whole lot of difference. So we started out educating people on WhatsApp. From there, we moved to the Facebook community and um, that's how it has, it has been. So I started as a nurse coach, uh, mentor for the pregnant women. And the knowledge I gained that volunteering for the Pregnancy Support Foundation, it's um, helped me also um, when I wanted to start my own um, community as um, that's when I wanted to, to start the body loss um, community I was able to put um, all the experiences as gathered from volunteering or partnering with um, the Pregnancy Support Foundation into my own personal um, community. Debbie can you tell us more about Tom Brown and MJ Foods how do these products contribute to safe pregnancy and delivery? Okay um the mj food started as a passion i discovered i loved cooking so i just started cooking for people for fun and um at some point after i had my first uh, baby um i was at, at that point where we have to transition from breast milk to um complementary feeding so at that point i got so even if, even though i was a nurse at that point it was it was a whole lot of work because i was so scared um i didn't know what my baby was going to take what oh, sorry what she was going to tolerate actually at that time so i 
went online, I went on Google, I went on um, uh, YouTube, and I discovered, oh, there's this food that, um, that in my area, there's this food that we give to children, we call it on brown. It's a combination of um, grains, legumes, um, nuts, and things like that, crayfish. So, um, because um, most people give their children just one grain, just let's say corn or guinea corn or something like that in my um, home country too. But the Tom Brown is a combination of several grains, several legumes and um, crayfish, fish and other things that we have to combine um, together. So the MJ foods, um, when I, I started, I just started doing that for fun. I was cooking for people. Um, I would go to their homes where they have a small house party. I would just go and cook. So after I had my first child, like I said, I made a particular combination that this combination of guinea corn, combination of guinea corn, maize, uh, millet, um, granite, crayfish, like that. So I had that combination, but I, I, I made it in... Um, in a cold form. When I mean cold form, it was in a wet form. So it was in a poor form. So I would make it and I would put it in the freezer. And every morning I would just cook. And, you know, we have a way of preparing it over here. But when I went into further research, I discovered that there was a way I could do it in a powder form. And it would still serve its purpose. So... I started doing more research, I started reading more about it, and I came up with that combination. The same combination I had initially, but this time I had to sun dry. I had to do a lot of dry method, oven drying, sun drying um, of the grains, the granite, the fish, the crayfish. Yes, so I did that, and I discovered that it saved me a lot of stress. I didn't have to worry about uh, um, power supply. I didn't have to worry. I didn't have to worry about um, 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 it changing taste and things like that. So, and working as a nurse, I it, it really helps me a lot. So, since it's in a powdered form, I will just scoop, mix with water, cook, and uh, I'll serve my baby. So, when I did that. And, you know, this is a combination of all of these, the, that's the grains and the legumes. It was very rich. And people were like, oh, what are you giving to your baby with, in addition to milk and other things? But, so, I, yes, I also forgot to mention one ingredient too that I added to my combination. That's the soya, soya beans, yes. So, people were like, ah, what are you giving to your child? What are you giving to your baby? She, she, she looks fresh and things like that. I was like, okay, this is what i give to her so you're like okay can you just give me a little let me make for my child too and you know from there i just took out some um, um quantity from the one i'd made i gave to a few friends i was like oh this is nice ah uh, well debbie okay how did you make it and i told them the whole procedure they were like no 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 no. there was no way i will have i don't have that time i'm not going to do that i was like okay you're not going to do that i can do that for you and you're going to pay me you get so that was how it started, and I started making um, Tom Brown for my friends. I started making Tom Brown. Actually, Tom Brown is basically for babies. You understand, not for pregnant women. Yes. So I started making Tom Brown for um, for my friends, and you know, a friend will tell a friend, another friend will tell another friend. You get that? Oh, I know this nurse, and because you know, when you're a nurse and you're making something that um, um, people. I would like, you're, you're making something that is nice. People are like, okay, she's a nurse. I think she knows what she's doing. You, you, <laughs> at least they're very certain that <laughs> it's, 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 going to be, it's going to be very neat. They're very certain that whatever I'm giving to them was made in an hygienic environment. So, so that was how it started. People started at a point, somebody gave me a link uh, uh, of, of someone who had um, a supermarket where she sells things for babies, uh, where she sells baby items. And Uma called me, okay, can I get some of your products? As you, I, I learned you make some of the, uh, these things very well. And a lot of people have been coming um, to my uh, market asking me if I have this product. It's a locally made product. Yes, do I? Do you have this? Do you have that? There are some people who make this around. And we're like, okay, 
there's a nurse I know around that makes this thing. So please, okay, I've heard a lot about you. Can you supply me? Can you give this to me? I'm like, okay, there's no problem. So <laughs> that was how it started. But recently, um, a lot of people are now coming up with um, um, different ideologies that pregnant women, uh, sorry, that lactating mothers, that mothers who are still breastfeeding their babies, that um, they can still take um, the part. Because in my area, we believe that, okay, once a woman, uh, sorry, once a woman just puts to bed, um, it's very important that she um, takes a lot of fluid and she takes um, a lot of um, food that are um, in liquid form. Yes, so the Tom Brown is, is made in a liquid form. So people feel, okay, since it's very nutritious, it's a combination of different greens, it's a combination of, um, of, of, of soya beans, legumes, and a lot of things. So why not, uh, um, instead of taking just corn or taking just guinea corn or taking just millet, if this is a combination of different nutrients, it's very important that, okay, let's give it to pregnant women too. Oh, sorry, let's give it to women who are lactating. So recently we're like, okay, lactating women who have take, uh, sorry, who have um, um, uh, uh, ingested the Tom Brown also say, okay, it's um, helps them with their breast milk flow. I don't know. I've not done any research <laughs> concerning that, but that is what um, um, they say, that since it's in a liquid form, it has helped them um, produce um, enough breast milk. And um, since we come from an environment where we encourage a lot of lactating, where we encourage lactating mothers to take foods that are um, uh, in liquid, let's say water, juice, so pap, um, we, we basically take things that are light, take things that are in liquid form. So. If this Tom Brown can be made in liquid form, okay, why not? Pregnant, um, sorry, lactating mothers can also take um, um, the Tom Brown. So, but basically, my initial aim of coming up with this combination was to meet um, a need, and the need um, I, I, I was uh, I, I was trying to meet was um, to meet the need of babies who are transitioning from breast milk to uh, um, other um, semi-solid foods, liquid foods, unlike um, other than um, breast milk. So um, that's just it. So I still recommend, I still tell women, okay, before you can give your baby Tom Brown, let your baby be around um, six months. I still, because in our area here, yeah, in our environment here, yeah, we, yeah, we, are, we are opportune to benefit from maternity leave. Some places you, you, you get that luxury of six months. You have to stay at home for at least six months. So if you're going to be at home for six months, you can still breastfeed your child. Um, some other places, in some workplaces, you don't get all that luxury to breastfeed your baby, to stay at home or to enjoy maternity leave for that uh, um, long period of time. In some places, you wonder. So in summary, Debbie, it sounds like the Tom Brown and MJ Foods, it's a mix of greens, legumes, several grains, and other items that's good for women and those who are lactating. Is that right? For nutrients? Is, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, Debbie, what is the significant change that COVID-19 has brought to maternal and child care nursing? Okay. Um, um, at the initial time when the um, COVID um, broke out in my country, we had a lot of women who were not able to assess health care. Um, and uh, with the lockdown, people were not able to come to the hospital. A lot of women were scared of coming to the hospital. They didn't want to be termed as a, a COVID positive patient or they, didn't, they felt that um, they could contact the virus when they um, come to the hospital. So, uh, but um, thankfully, with the vaccine half there right now, um, people are beginning to come back to the hospital and, well, even with the vaccine, we still have a lot of educa health education to do. We still have a lot to do when it comes to enlightening women that oh, e, you can come to the hospital. It's the stigmatization. It's also reducing um, the vaccine is out there. You can have this vaccine. You can, uh, your baby can be healthy. You can be healthy. So it's very important that you come and assess healthcare where you be adequately monitored irrespective of the, the, the virus. So that's where we are at the moment. Debbie, what is your most significant message to our aspiring mothers concerning healthy pregnancy and delivery? 
Okay, as prime mothers, okay. So what I would say to them is that they should ensure that um, before they get pregnant, they should go for um, genetic counseling. They should um, get um, the necessary um, investigations that they need to do before um, they start um, conceiving uh, because um, some of all these um, childhood diseases that we see around today can uh, or would have been detected if um, mothers or women have... Um, had some of these investigations done before um, getting pregnant. And I will also say that it's very important that they assess um, healthcare from uh, a very reliable facility, very, um, not just any, any facility, you understand? So it's very important. We have a lot of, um, well, there are issues in my country that I may not be able to mention um, here on this chat, but. It's very important you don't just go to anything called hospital or any place called hospital to just assess healthcare. So it's very important that you are assessing healthcare from the right um, source and ensure that you go for your antenatals, you take your prenatal medications, which are very important. From time to time, you 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 go for your to, you see your gynecologist, you, you sorry your obstetrician. So it's very important that we do all of these to. Um, have a successful pregnancy and a successful childbirth. Okay. So you mentioned genetic counseling before they conceive, prenatal medication, yes. seeing your OB yes. regularly, and what, what else was it? Okay. I think I also okay, mentioned going for your checkups. That's going, um, Got seeing it. you. Okay. Yeah. You already mentioned that. Yes. Okay. All right. Mm. So, Debbie, how do you see the future of maternal and child care nursing? Are there any changes you would like to see? Well, um, I would love to see um, a lot of changes in maternal and child health. I would love to see um, more women access health care from um, the hospital. I would love to see women who would not, who would not um, um, have so much confidence in accessing in a, a quack. Let me put it that way, because um, quackery is one issue that um, is eating deep into uh, the healthcare system in my own country, and it's, it's really becoming a mess. So um, we have some women who have more confidence in assessing um, these quacks than assessing the hospital. So these are changes I would love to see. Women who um, have believed so much in the nurses, women who believe so much in the doctors, women who believe so much in the healthcare system, in their country and they are confident enough to um, assess healthcare from this um, um, facility. I also want to see um, a situation whereby um, the government can come in and um, 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 do a radio broadcast or a television broadcast where we have to health educate women um, concerning their health where they um, go for common well um, the government can also um, collaborate with um, other NGOs that are doing uh, things as related that's related to pregnancy, go into the communities, the rural communities, to help educate these women to um, let them know the importance of accessing um, healthcare from a reliable facility. Yes. So, Debbie, we're interested here on Nurse Tech. Tell us, okay. you are a mother, a content creator music minister, graphic designer, a chef, a personal development advocate, and your wife. How do you find balance in all that you do? Okay, um, concerning that, I, <laughs> well, I, 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 if I'm true, if, 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 let me be truthful to myself, I take a break from some of these activities once in a while. I don't do all of this at the same time. It's very important. Um, my job, my family comes first. That's yes. right. So it's, so it's very, very important. So my job and family comes first and um, other things can come in between. So um, when I go to work and I come back and I have free time, I do some work on, uh, on graphics, but I pay attention to my kids. I don't joke with, <laughs> I don't joke with them. So when they're at school, when I'm off, um, uh, I'm off duty, they're at school, I can do other things. I can work on my phone. I can work on the community. Um, I can do every other thing. But these two, 
um, my religion, my job, and my family. These are the three things that comes first. So every other thing, it's based on my availability. When I have time for these things, I do that. So I don't get to choke myself with a lot of things, and I rest as much as possible. So you said you found a balance in all that you do by taking a break, self-care, family comes first. You mentioned religion, too. Is that right in your job? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. What is the biggest challenge you've had so far in your career, and how do you manage it? Well, <laughs> well right now, I'm um, pursuing uh, a career development, and it's been challenging, but... Um, all the same, I'll keep pushing. Uh, I'll keep pushing. I, uh, I, you know, at some point I was almost getting tired because I, I really wanted a lift in my career. But you know, sometimes we go through challenges and uh, we don't we don't back uh, off when we experience challenges. We keep pushing. So I just see it as a phase, and I know that this phase will be over very soon. I'll keep trying. I'll keep pushing. And I know one day I'll get to what I want. So that's it. <laughs> yes. Keep pushing. That's all right. Yes, I'll keep pushing. Mm -hmm. So, Debbie, do you feel burnout with all that you do? And if so, how do you know it? How did you identify it? And how do you handle it? Well, when I um, get tired of doing so many things, I, I get irritable. I... Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's just natural. I just get so with it when I'm like, well, I think you need to take a break. So, um, and one thing I do is I take social media breaks a lot. If there's anything I want to, I, I, if there's, that's one thing I, it's very easy for me to go on social media breaks. I, I just go on social media break. I don't want to be online for a while. I want to pay attention to myself. I really want to rest. I want to do other things you know, actually spend more time with my family right. away from the work stress. And so I, it's, it's very easy for me to identify when I'm stressed. I get so irritable, especially when I return from work, I get so irritable. So I, when I do that, I just zone off. I just, yeah. like, sometimes yeah. I want to have a long time, just me, take a cold shower and I'm just lying on the bed and I'm resting. Sometimes I just want to be off social media uh, um, spend more time with my family so it's very easy for me to identify that oh i'm getting burned out sometimes it shows on my skin you know my skin sometimes my skin's my skin gets so rough and i i, I know that <laughs> they have gotten to my peak so at that point i just know that oh i need to take it slowly i need to rest and mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. so putting this together for our nurse deck listeners and viewers you know that you're burnt out because you get easily irritated. You said you even notice skin changes. Is that right? Yeah. And As, Yes. Yeah, and to deal with that, you take breaks, you rest, you take a shower, and you spend time with your family. Yes, I mean. So as a founder of a support group or a social community yourself, how do you think nurses can benefit from a community like the TBN and Nurse Deck? Okay, um, I I think um, student nurses can benefit so much from the body nurse community um, in so many ways. Um, recently, uh, I, I think even a few hours ago, I had a conversation with um, a coach, and I got um, to we got talking, and I told him I said um, I want to come. I'm, I'm coming up with an idea that would help um, student nurses um, develop digital skills soft, soft skills that um, were very necessary that yeah, um, that would help them even after um, graduation you get so and from time to time I'm also coming up with initiative in the body nurse community that would help um, student nurses express themselves better okay, recently I started allowing the students um, um, control or moderate on the group every week so with that they are free it's uh, um, um, a student nurse to a student nurse communicating. So you're, you're not like, okay, who is this uh, um, um, older nurse talking to us? So so I, I came up with that initiat initiative and it has really helped um, the community a lot and it has helped a lot of student nurses feel free, um, develop their communication skills and they're able to relate to themselves. So, um, you know, a community whereby you can come and tell us, oh, 
I gave an, uh, someone an insulin injection today and you're happy about it. Uh, um, I, I, I felt I wasn't treated so well in the clinical area today and you're, you're happy about it. Someone is telling you, oh, or some other time, do it this way, do it that way. So, and I think that's the same thing as um, happening in the North, um, the North Dex community. I joined um, a few weeks ago. I'm still trying to understand the community, and I see people ask questions, and I, I, I see responses from other nurses. I see them get help. Um, yeah. I see a lot of people who um, are very free to express themselves, their challenges, and somebody's right there telling them, oh, sorry about that, sorry you have to go through this today. I, I think I read one or someone who was saying that, oh, he had a lot of, um, um, he recorded a lot of death ca uh, cases on that particular day. And, you know, people were trying to encourage him, you know, this is what a uh, um, community is all about, this is what the community is all about, where you feel free and you get help. Right. Even if you, you cannot see these people, but you get the necessary help that you need. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yes. So, Debbie, is there a topic that you would like to mention or discuss that we have not already? Uh, well, I think we've discussed all. Okay. Uh, I'm, I recently, okay, I think um, a few weeks ago, um, with, um, in the community, some students were so interested in coming out on LinkedIn and LinkedIn. I just threw the question open and I was like, I, I knew a number of students in the community that are already, already out there on LinkedIn and, and I was like, okay, are you willing to organize a LinkedIn optimization class for student nurses because it looks like we don't have a lot of student nurses on LinkedIn and this is a professional platform I believe that a lot of students can benefit from. Um, so we Facebook is there, and other social media communities are there. Mm -hmm. but LinkedIn is a professional community. You should be on LinkedIn. You understand? So, and they were willing to help. They were willing, and that was how we came up with uh, um, a LinkedIn optimization class for student nurses, which is the first of its kind in my community. And you know, in in the next few days, we'll be having um, the webinar. And I'm just sitting in the background looking at them because the, all the speakers are either student nurses or student nurses, um, sorry, registered nurses with few months experience. That's those who wrote their exams recently and they just passed their nursing council exam. So to me, it's a success story. Like, I, I feel so elated that, oh, you've been able to groom the students that they can take up this challenge from the organization, from the graphic design, and the, those who are going to moderate at the webinar, they are all student nurses. So it's, it's amazing. So in fact, I was so happy that, okay, I think I'm getting to that point where I can say, okay, the, um, uh, the, the hope or the ambition, the things I had in mind, the dreams, the aspiration, the things I wanted to do out of the community, I can see students who are now coming out, who are interested in taking up this challenge, who want to be more and just being a student nurse who want to learn a lot of things and see what they can do um, for themselves. So, yes, that's it. Yes. That's one thing I also want to add. So you mentioned Facebook. You mentioned LinkedIn. Nurse Tech Social reminds me of Facebook. Have you checked that one out? Oh, really? I... Yes. Really after yes. this... Let Oh, I think you should send me the link. I think I, I added the uh, them on Instagram. And um, I'm, I'm also following Nurse Deck on, uh, on on LinkedIn and Instagram. But the Facebook, I'm just hearing that now. So maybe after this interview, you can send me. <laughs> yes, you can send me the link. I'd love to join. I'd love to join. I love what you guys are doing at the Nurse Deck. I've been seeing um, Neville's post uh, on LinkedIn. You know, providing support for nurses and. Uh, it's been amazing, yes. So just that That's my support system for sure. Yes. So yes. love to continue the conversation on Nurse Deck Social. We will send you the link. And thank you for your time today, Debbie. All right. Thank you too. I'm so grateful. Have a wonderful day. Yes. Bye, guys. And you too. Bye. Bye, bye. Thank you.